Welcome everyone to another episode of Lunar Crush Live. We're really excited today. Um, we've got Matic Network's Sandeep Nailwall on, um, and we're going to go through a couple of social insights first with John, and then we will bring Sandeep on. So, John, take us through take us through Matic. We'll do. Thanks, Joe. Um, so, I uh, wanted to just pull up a few different metrics that we've been observing on LunarCrush.com over the last year. I'll just again, I'll mention uh, it is free to sign up, lunacrush.com, and you can get all these metrics whenever you want to. Uh, so if we look at social volume over the past year for Matic Network, uh, we see that it's up 571%. And you know, if anything, it's, it's quite interesting. I mean, the, the one year change on the price is up 25%. So quite stable, decent return. Um, and we're in a really interesting spot with the altcoins right now. So it's going to be fascinating to watch this kind of play out over the next few weeks here um, with as far as price goes. But uh, when we when we talk about social volume, um, there's been 472,937 specific mentions of Matic Network. That includes the name Matic Network. It includes the ticker, anything related to Matic Network in any sort of combination at all. And that includes Twitter, Reddit, Medium, YouTube. And uh, we, have, we also collect lots of news out there, but that's another metric. Um, so when we look at that, you know, it's been it's up 571 percent over last year, um, and it's gone as high as when we go back to the high point was December 8th, uh, where there was 8,555 mentions that we collected versus where we are right now. We're about 1,400, so still really a, a great range when you go all the way back to a year ago, and that was only 227. So growing, communities growing, um, which equates to a lot of different things: um, wallet growth, adoption, all of that. So when we look at social engagement, um, which um, it's one thing to have Matic Network mentioned, um, it's another thing that in those posts, um, is there engagement going on in those posts? So for example, um, if something about Matic Network is posted, is there a retweet? Are there comments? Um, and so we measure all of that, 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 that engagement over time. And we see that that's also up 317% over time. Um, and when we look at things like, I want to point out just quickly shared links, you know, links that relate to Matic Network. So we, we actually kind of spider, similar to what, like, say, Google would do, uh, where we actually go through every single link that's ever posted in a Matic post. And we actually see, is it a Matic link? Is it related to Matic Network? We look at the content of those posts. And we see that that's up a lot. That's up sharply. So 2,200, 2,209%. Um, and now almost 52,000 URLs have been shared, unique URLs over the last year. So the community is sharing a lot of content. And so if we dive deeper into that, who is that community? And so one of the things we look at is uh, we call it, yeah, they're, they're influencers. Uh, and we objectively calculate what an influencer is. Um, and I, I know just recollection here, we've posted multiple times over the last year because we've seen some really nice growth on the Matic network. Um, like as far as influencers go. Uh, and we calculate these influencers through, there's really four main things to look at. Um, how much engagement are these influencers getting on their post? How much activity do these influencers have? And how has their relative popularity versus everyone else increased? And we look at that over time. So if I told you like, I'll just pull up one week here. If I, if I said the one week influencers um, look like this here, and actually Lunar Crush is on there, and so so is Sandeep, and so is Matic Network, because we've actually been posting a lot about the stream. But if I look over the the last year, um, it's a it's a different story because um, this is the people that are constantly posting. And when we look at that, we see Matic Network, Crypto Michael, Scott Melker, the Wolf of All Streets uh, of All Streets, Crypto Differ. We've seen a lot of posts from them. Uh, G-Boy, uh, Pentoshi, there's Sandeep again, and we see Vishal Kothari, which we I think we've chatted with him before as well. Um, and then when we look at just, I want to pull up just a few relative metrics to understand where Matic Network is at. Um, relative to say, let's just compare it to Ethereum as an example, which has a ton of activity, right? And I just want to do this for relative uh, comparison understanding. So when we look at Matic, we're seeing that there's about 6,600 tweets versus 144,000. Um, when we're looking at engagement, we're about 9 million engagements versus 474 million engagements. Uh, not a lot of spam for Matic, but a ton on Ethereum. And so when we when we look at this this kind of comparison, and this is this is just I'm sorry, this is over the last week. Let's actually look at a year. Um, when we look at a year on Matic versus Ethereum, 
There we go. We see 436,000 versus 5.6 million. We see 602 social million social engagements versus 18.8 billion social engagements for Ethereum. So I just want to throw that out there as a relative comparison to know where we're at and the the actual huge wave of growth that could lie ahead as Matic hopefully executes on, on everything. So um, so with that, uh, I'll hand it back to you, Joe, and, and let's talk to uh, Sandeep. Let's bring in Sandeep. Man himself, Sandeep, how are you, my man? I'm good, I'm good, Joe, I'm very good. And, and you know, like fascinating statistics uh, shared by John. Uh, and you know, I've been, previously I've seen uh, Lunar Trust platform, uh, you know, some time back. And very, very interesting insights. I keep in encouraging my team also to keep, uh, you know, using Luna Plus Fresh platform to actually measure, uh, you know, what exactly they are doing. And this was a good, uh, you know, refresher. I hope, uh, you know, they are also there watching the analysis and, you know, kind of use this more uh, for their internal analysis. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it's just, it's a nice benchmark to kind of understand where you are in comparison to the market and, you know, looking at something like Ethereum, obviously massive you know, smart contract, et cetera. But it, at the same time, it's good to kind of see where you are and see how you're growing. And it, it isn't necessarily how large you are. It's, do you have an audience? Are they growing? So um, good yeah. stuff there. So I wanted to, we always kind of start about where, where are you in the world and, and what's it like there? Yeah, so I am uh, currently uh, in India, uh, in Delhi, basically uh, at my hometown. And uh, like Matic is, Matic is based, like our headquarters are based out of uh, like uh, Bangalore, but although it's a decentralized project, so, you know, uh, there's no, no such thing, but, you know, there is, uh, you know, we have an office in uh, Bangalore where, you know, people wanted to work together, they can work together. Uh, so I am uh, working out of Delhi these days. Uh, my family is based out of here. So, yeah, working from here. Cool. No, that's awesome. And, and thanks for being with us. I know the a complete different time change. So appreciate that. Um, so yeah, tell us, tell us a little bit about the journey. You know, we always want to hear a little bit about your background and how you got started and, and why are you passionate about, about crypto? Yeah. So, um, I, I have been a, you know, serial entrepreneur, uh, you know, I, I come from a computer science background, uh, before, uh, you know, falling into the crypto rabbit hole. Uh, I was, uh, you know, have uh, running a B2B, uh, you know, B2B services marketplace. So it was kind of a Alibaba, you know, uh, but but for, like, you know, trying to be not Alibaba, but kind of like, you know, but Alibaba is for products uh, manufacturing, let's say from, from uh, you know, it initially started from China. So it was for India where you can, you know, contract reliable, uh, you know, services providers and things like that. And, uh, you know, that business was not growing and scaling as much as I would have liked, right? You know, it was it was doing well. It was not, you know, scaling that fast. And my goal, you know, I, I also come from, a, you know, one of the top B schools uh, in India. And uh, I uh, used to work with Deloitte uh, in their technology consulting division. Then, uh, you know, I was the CTO for a e-commerce uh, division of a, you know, a multi-billion dollar company in India. So, uh, you know, uh, basically I wanted to, I got into the business because I wanted to, uh, you know, do something like scalable. I want to, you know, see things working at that scale and, you know, experience that. that. So with, with my previous startup, I was not, you know, kind of uh, seeing that scalability into it. And then, uh, you know, then I started reading like more about the, you know, the upcoming technologies. Like, for example, I initially ventured into artificial intelligence. And I wanted to do something with the with the AI side of things. I started reading it, and you know there was too much of mathematics for me uh, to to uh, kind of you know getting engaged after multiple years of working in this thing. So I said I then explored more. So I you know hopped onto blockchain, and at that was the time I think in 2015 end or 16 starting. Uh, so you know a lot of uh, you know buzz was coming to to Bitcoin. I think that uh, you know the whole bull run the previous bull run was just getting started so i thought that you know let's let's give a shot to blockchains also and i had actually in 2013 tried to sort of mine very briefly i tried to install the bitcoin miner and all that but i think by that time it was already too late to mine with a simple laptop uh, so you know I, I i thought that okay but i started reading about uh, you know like the mastering bitcoin from andreas and like kind of the holy grail if you want to get into yep. the uh, into the 
to the field right so and three four chapters in i realized that oh this is this is like really big like you know we don't realize that this is so big and this is actually the same like even now when you talk to non crypto people they still think that oh this is some you know technology like ai and all that they don't realize that you know very soon in few years from now they are going to have uh, their interface with this community right i mean with this with this technology one way or the other there's no way uh, you know you can escape and you know it's a matter of when rather than if, if so i realized that and i thought that you know i want to be in this field and then i, I started studying more i went back to programming uh, you know again as a blockchain programmer you get introduced always the first blockchain is ethereum only i started building a few dapps and things like that and then kind of pivoted into the uh, blockchain consulting side of things initially just to learn uh, more and you know apply my skills and then uh, you know i also became very active in the indian communities like one of the bigger communities in the indian space uh, you know around bitcoin and cryptocurrencies so there i you know met my other co-founder jayanti he was and we used to solve a lot of technical queries for people like at that time the user experience was even more horrible so but you know we understood uh, about each other that we both had technical inclination and we you know kind of both were programmers and he is more of a researcher also so he was working with plasma group uh, at that time which was started by vitalik and joseph kuhn and uh, he used to you know he was the first one to build the uh, working mvp for uh, like a working prototype of plasma mvp which was the third iteration of plasma and we realized and, and you know he also real, he realized that you know there are some specific issues with the current way the plasma was being done like for example what is today is omise go for example which is a utxo based implementation and we realized that this is not going to be used that much so you know instead of this we should actually uh, think of having something which uses plasma for payments and you know but can be used for smart contracts and those smart contracts can also be uh, scaled on the on the side so, so we started with the evm based this thing and that's how the whole journey started by the end of 2018 we started working and researching together and i think first or like starting of the quarter 2 in 2018 we set up the the company and you know like the structure and everything so we've been there since then awesome and yeah i, I do want to talk a little bit about the you know the the industry in india and how kind of the reception is there compared to some other places but i you know just cuz we're kind of on the topic a little bit of of the journey i mean looking at scaling ethereum and side chains and kind of working down that path i mean when you know when we started lunar crush it was you know we we didn't feel like there was enough transparency you know for investors and there wasn't a fundamental place for people to go to really understand the marketplace in a whole because there are no traditional analysis it's all about community right and so for you it was like what was that maybe event or why you know because there, there was a lot especially back then there's a lot of different places you could have went to build it sounds like you have a background where you can kind of understand whether the business side or the technical side so what was that kind of event or why directly into kind of scaling and and side chain yeah yeah so uh, like like the that moment was the uh, you know like sudden explosion of crypto kitties right so we before that we, we all used to be like you know okay ethereum i mean the, the the transaction used to cost like few cents but you know you never really minded that and your focus was to you know focus was on you know application side that what application we can build with this right but then suddenly crypto kitties happened right and then you know we realized that we are nowhere there right nowhere there right you know only like 10000 users on ethereum and then the whole ethereum network is clocked for you know like one to one one to two weeks right so we realized that you know this is not going to happen this is not working out that was kind of that moment where we where we realized that okay you know as as somebody who's looking to build some applications you know we realized that this is not going to work there's a lot of infrastructure work that's required we everyone knew that like it's not like i'm i'm saying that nobody knew that but you know everyone knew that but you know that was kind of in the face event and then with that whole bitcoins rally also to or all the way to uh, you know 20000 you realize that you know even the bitcoin fees like if you wanted to transfer you know you had to pay like 300 dollars at at the peak you know for doing a single bitcoin transactions like there were days right like that and people were willing to pay that fee so we realize that you know again with even with bitcoin also even with simple payments also you know that's not not going to happen and uh, before that like the bitcoin community also used to have used to code payment as a mechanism but then everyone realized that you know payment is not going to be the use case with bitcoin it's a digital gold and and you know things like that so the writing was on the wall that you know the scalability is the is the biggest problem to solve 
and i think you know we were not the ones everyone like you know we the whole ico mania of 2000 like 17 and then you know early 2018 was based on scaling solution right everybody like you know and that's that's why like i think this this bull run uh, that we saw with the defi projects is much better than the you know is in the like the late 2017 because at that point yep. everyone was trying to you know just quote vaporware like you know have some white papers because obviously you had a excuse that you know you can't build the network it will take time and you could you could raise like huge amount of money right you know 20 million dollars 30 million dollars 40 million dollars right that kind of stuff and you know you at the like what you had at your hands is white paper only right so first we realized that part itself at that point it's it's itself and we did not go out like we could have gone out into end of 2017 or early 2018 and then you know have, would have raised funds and and you know things like that but we said that we are not going to do that we're going to have a test net then only we'll do any kind of fundraising and all that so uh you know but this bull run where you have defi applications at least something is there for users to interact right so i i thought although there were there was still like you know again few people were able to do scans and all that and you know do these you know need, like needless folks like on ethereum you are poking you know uh, some protocol into a new protocol and things like that but then overall i think uh, you know it was not easy to do that level of like scam even like the valuations were more humble like you know you people projects raise like you know 1 to 2 million dollars 3 million dollars still okay not like 100 million dollar valuation 200 million valuation on a white paper so i think that that's uh, that is also a good thing about about the you know scenario that we have today so coming back to the previous like your main question was that you know the crypto kitties what the was the main instance where we realized that you know uh we should get into the uh, scalability and then as i said that you know my uh, fellow co-founder jenty like not to be core technical architecture is his brain child only so you know he was working with the plasma group and we thought that you know this is a good uh, starting point to you know kind of achieve scalability and to be honest like we are the like we are and omisego also launched their mainnet but we are the only team many teams talked about plasma raise funds around that time but then you know, we and then now we say go also are the only teams who actually implemented that you know you would have seen that time where everybody was talking about plasma 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 right and we actually built a production ready system which is getting a huge amount of usage now um, you know so that's 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 good thing that i you know i'm very proud of uh, our team that you know we stuck to our vision and we created this thing and now we are you know adding more and more functionality Yeah, and maybe you can talk a little bit about that adoption just real quick. And um, you know, from when you launched till now and like what are some of the inflection points um and some of the announcements and some of the things that have happened where you said, you know, I, okay, I I'm starting to feel the adoption, I'm feeling the traction now. I mean, what what did it look like from kind of launch till now? Yeah, so I mean, uh, you know, the 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 funny thing is that because we don't like first of all we did not raise too much of money from the Silicon Valley VCs which get you that Twitter you know elite uh, shilling uh, you know if you call it uh, and then you know like uh, even on the western world many people don't know that but if you see if you see on the on the adoption side like the biggest vr spaces for example decentraland is building on matic right uh, your somnium space the number 2 probably on that um, or maybe you know sandbox also has publicly said that they'll be they're exploring matic although like you know they're still in the exploration phase uh on the gaming side you have so many games like i can you know have like keep counting the games but there are more than 30 40 games already live and you know at least 50 games would be already you know building on matic uh on on various capacities on the nft side of things like you have some bigger name like niftex actually migrated to matic and uh, you know and there are there are multiple uh, bigger like nft platforms Uh, which you know for which the announcements are expected to come uh, soon enough right so these people are like sort of uh, you know uh, moving uh, moving automatic and then even on the defi side like recently we have started seeing uh, projects you know deploying uh, you know mainnet protocols on the side chain for example easyfi team launched like a compound like uh, you know protocol and they had at peak around 35 million dollars in their tvl uh similarly uh, there is a quick swap like who has who has done a community kind of for for uni swap and all that so on the defi side uh, like, and the more interesting protocols are now coming up like you know there are cross chain uh, aggregator uh, dex aggregator protocols and things like that which are coming uh, 
uh, now on Matic. So you know, like all the you know major things, like even on the enterprise side, we have a few big clients that we are working with. Infosys, for example, uh, you know Nasdaq listed forty billion dollar company. They you know chose to become our validators, like on Matic Network, and then they are also building a few products with us. So you know for the enterprise audience. So yeah, I mean all around, like there are so many things going on. Like anybody who's who wants to you know just check out which applications are there already on Matic. Just go through our announcement channel and you know check out. Like for example, I, I keep forgetting. Like for example, prediction markets. So like one of the biggest prediction markets, like uh, you know, like Poly Market recently they now their fund is around like absolutely top notch VCs. They they raise they are there on Matic. Sportex Canada Canada based prediction market. They are there on Matic. Plotex is now like you know like another bigger uh, you know uh, they are also exploring Matic and then. You know, you have the like the OG of the prediction marketplace, like Augur. They have also publicly, uh, you know, multiple sign sets that you know they are actively exploring Matic network and you know building a full blown uh, prediction market uh, of their like you know this thing. So yeah, I mean prediction markets also like out of the five or six top players, you will see four players, uh, you know, out, on, out of Ethereum are uh, you know actively involved in. in that but then as, as I said. What is the what is the driver of that? Like, what is the use case that they're coming at you with? Is it we have a, we have to scale? We have to have low transaction fees? Like, what exactly is it that they're coming at you with? It sounds like you have a lot of traction in gaming, decentraland. I saw yeah. that even Esteban and Ari are even advisors now. Automatic. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah, like yeah, yeah, yeah. tell us a, tell us what that that driver is in Tematic. Yeah. So the driver is is like I think three main things. First is that. Of course, there's a scalability, like you know, low pass fees and all that. The 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 bigger problem, bigger thing is that you know it's decentralized. So we started with a vision of building a decentralized layer two. It's very easy to achieve, like scale. To be honest, like you know, you can implement a simple server and implement a bridge or make two three, uh, you know, validators together, bring two three validators together, and then you know, create a uh, create a PO, proof of authority kind of system, POA kind of system. Right, and then uh, you know, run a run a chain on it. Like it's very easy to do that, right? And have low gas gas fees and all that. But it's very very hard to create a decentralized multi validator proof of stake system. Like you know, the 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 process alone of bringing these validators on board uh, and you know, kind of get them to run the validators, the economic incentive design for it and all that is not an easy job at all, right? So, so I think the first thing that they come for is the like, of course, is the scalability. But then the decentralized nature of the network, right? A decentralized censorship resistance, resistant nature of the network. The other important thing is the, uh, you know, the production readiness of the system. So uh, when I say production readiness of the system, that means that the the, the network is already live. It actually uh, multiple wallets, like all the top wallets, like your MetaMask to Portis to you know all of the all of the wallets, they support uh, Matic network. You have on ramp services, the developer tooling because we. Are a EVM based implementation, so all the developer tooling of the Ethereum works works directly, like Web3 JS and your all uh, like you know uh, yeah, Truffle and whatever dev, dev, their famous tools, Tenderly for example. Most of the famous developer tools they uh, you know uh, directly support Matic, like Graph Protocol, very close to supporting the production level. So here there is a network for you as a developer which has everything which you can use. And uh, you know can can start building and deploying uh, on top of uh, on top of Matic network as layer two. You have the security of Ethereum, and then uh, you know the developer friendliness is there, and then you know you can build for masses. So I think over all in all, it, it you know kind of creates a very strong proposition for uh, you know any developer who's building a like who wants to build a mass adopted application. And what do you what are your thoughts? I mean, on on layer one Ethereum scaling, and and where that goes. So uh, layer one Ethereum scaling, like see, ETH two point zero, is, you know, slightly, uh, you know, I I would say that multiple it has multiple stages, uh, but, I think it will take at least few, years like one to two years minimum, to reach that stage and you know have a ETH two point zero which has. You know, functioning shards available where you can deploy applications on multiple shards, and then inter-shard communication is is even like further away, like uh, from that. So there is some time in terms of ETH 2.0 coming in, but then you know recently uh, even Vitalik posted a roll-up centric 
like you know which which you can expand into a l2 centric uh, roadmap of ethereum i think that is more uh, viable because you know sharding also many researchers have said that said that you know uh, sharding is also very very difficult to achieve especially with a with a robust crypto economic model so you know there are few doubts from people also that whether like a full blown sharded blockchain can be achieved uh, or not or things like that yeah so so you know with e2.0 we think that it's going to take a lot of time secondly when, like even if the e2.0 comes in then also there are multiple parameters to be seen right so you see like for example ethereum has uh, ethereum is going to have 64 shards for example and each right. shard will be similar to the current ethereum chain which has like 13 tps right like roughly 13 15 tps let's assume it's 20 tps right so 64 shards will be able to support somewhere around 1200 uh, tps or something like that right and then when you have 1200 T- tps the demand that defi has today like even <laughs> that demand can very easily you know uh, surpass that uh, you know this thing like if you simply calculate it with the gas fees like right we easily saw like like the peak gas fees was around let's say 100 dollars right and a viable gas fees for a defi application also would be somewhere around let's say 1 dollars so easy like it's 100x more than this and the scalability we, which we are going to achieve is 64x right so 64 shards and each shard equal to one chain right so we are we are looking at a scalability of 64x and we are on the gas fees in the peak times we have already seen a 100x expansion right so you can see that if even if we achieve 64x there is a good amount of possibility that you know that demand or that supply of the transactions will be taken will be kind of uh, uh, you know adopted by the defi apps themselves then what happens to the all the other kind of uh, apps like you know games nfts and things like that right so for them we believe that you know always the layer 1 will always be even for defi layer 1 will always be a settlement layer and then you know the business activity has to happen on uh, layer 2 that's what we believe right so layer 2 essentially also you can think of it like interconnected blockchain so you know there is a central blockchain which is let's say ethereum so we believe that a ideal way would be to expand ethereum into like the to to grow the scalability of ethereum 1.0 also in the meanwhile uh, with you know there are multiple uh, you know ways like eip 11559 1559 is there to reduce the gas fees or control the gas fees and things like that so there are multiple ways if these can be implemented to expand the layer 1 for now and then you know layer 2 interconnected you know chains can can interact with ethereum i think that can be also a, a viable future uh, for decentralized applications does this mean uh, i mean maybe this is over my head but does this mean matic would connect to 64 different blockchains as well on ethereum if 2.0 comes in then yeah definitely you know we we will we will uh, you know kind of create a system which wherein you can kind of the, as a layer 2 you can connect to you know every shard or you know there are there is a way where you can take Uh, or withdraw your money to an individual shard of course uh, that would be there but many people also you know see and it's an interesting so cosmos founder actually compared matic's architecture to eth 2.2 architecture so basically if you see ethereum right so how the eth 2.0 works is that you have a beacon chain okay and then below it you have multiple shards connected to beacon chain right now if you see matic what matic is essentially ethereum is the beacon chain and then you know matic side chains are connected to that that so if you can you know think of like that way as a mental model the ethereum becomes the beacon chain and matic side chains can be different different shards so that is also one way like we you know where we can have multiple side chains which are connected to like one single shard or multiple shards and things like that that will that will have to be seen how the uh, development and the applications evolve in terms of usage of that yeah so so eth 2.0 would be i think you said 1200 transactions um what would matic be with eth 2 2.0 out there how many transactions are we talking potential right now right now on ethereum uh, you know uh, right now on matic you can easily do like we have tested with like uh, extensive load so i think we have seen 7200 tps in one chain itself right so because it's a layer 2 it's much easier to scale on the layer 2 because you are relying on some part of the you know consensus of the layer 1 right so uh you know the layer 1 uh, so so one single chain can have 7200 tps so if you see that way you know we can have multiple you know ethereum side chains and can like uh, you know achieve like a you know tps of 100000 uh, 
transactions with 10 such side chains right that's possible but that tps is not like you know generally in the in the ico mania everyone wanted to chase tps like you know you need to have that many transactions to actually you know kind of uh, see the the value of the tps right that way so or, or kind of you need need that kind of tps so i think you know for this amount of tps currently that we have it's very good and we need to see some few killer applications which actually explode in the in the in the adoption uh, arena and then uh, you know we would need like more more change like that yeah it, it sure gets interesting with gaming and nfts right now and and there's so much buzz about nfts but it's such early days still but I, i'll be i'll be curious to see if that's the killer app that's going to necessitate having such high transaction volume it's going to be an, an interesting next uh, few months and years here absolutely absolutely and nft like you know you would see like you know like maybe what are the top nft projects that you are currently uh, let's say seeing in the market like can you name a few for example oh i'm not going to call other projects right now on this <laughs> okay we get in trouble <laughs> Okay. No, so some, of the, some of the upcoming projects I can name to you, like, you know, for example, NFT projects like Ave Gotchi is there, right? Building on Matic. Uh, Terra Virtua is there, building on Matic. Uh, you know, you name more, like Decentral Games, building on Matic. So, you know, you can see multiple such, you know, upcoming bigger NFT projects and you will see that they will have some sort of, uh, you know, like a large number of them would be, you know, currently... Uh, you know, integrating with Matic or something like that. Yeah. It, it seems like Decentraland's a pretty interesting one if you think about it with what could yeah. be built in there. So I think that's fascinating. I mean, we're, we're, you're talking to people that had Second Life accounts and, yeah. you know, thought thought that was just, it's probably that was just ahead of its time. But Second Life was starting to even get enterprise adoption. I remember attending a an IBM conference inside of Second Life. <laughs> and it was all virtual and it was super weird and it didn't work but um the idea was there it was just ahead of its time even computers yeah. weren't, weren't really weren't really rendering that well with second with second life so I, i'm curious to see where decentraland goes yeah 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 and you can already see like people building applications and games uh, over there so we have a joint fund with decentraland uh, where we are promoting teams to build games inside decentraland and you can see even you know you can see games like uh, or t projects like decentral games for example they yep. are they have a they have a like you know you might want to just open it like just open decentral games or google it you will find and so they are basically uh, within decentraland in the uh, las vegas of decentraland they have a casino right over there so where you can play multiple like blackjack and things like that in virtual reality and it's like, you know, fascinating experience over there also. So, you know, I mean, yeah, I mean, these, these, like the, the, the future that we are heading into is, is chaotic, but then, you know, very interesting also. Like, uh, I mean, right. it's hard to us, like, you know, people of our age to kind of uh, realize that what, what the world is going to look like in some time. That's true. So you guys put a joint fund together. How do people start building or get access to that? Do they apply to that? How does that work? Yeah, so there is a with like all the Decentraland community members, they have an uh, they they can simply fill a form and reach out to the Decentraland team and you know build their uh, applications and then you know uh, or like and submit their ideas and then you know the joint fund can kind of uh, you know fund them and uh, help them to build their basic MVP and everything. That's awesome. Yeah, I think sometimes people forget with with these projects and and kind of the infrastructure underneath there is incentivizing and building more startups. Right. It's it's a bunch of yeah. startups building more startups, building more startups and the innovation that is just coming out of this when you're when you're thinking so many steps ahead with a decentralized nature of operating a business and then operating your software. It it's just it's so many layers ahead of a standard kind of business starting and the way that the economics of that business and SaaS models versus new models. And so it's it's really interesting to see that. I mean, did you guys. Is it just a fund that's out there? I mean, can you say how much you guys kind of put together for that and how much does each team get? Yeah, so in that fund, like, you know, we have uh, we have currently put together $100,000 and then, you know, this is a fund to help teams to build their basic MVPs. So, you know, the, the fund kind of, uh, uh, you know, uh, depending on the size of the project that you are, you might be building a simple gallery or you might, building, you might be building something, you know, more complicated. 
so you know it ranges from like i think $2000 to $20000 somewhere around that so depends on like uh, you know what kind of scale your project is uh, is is looking to build that yeah cool yeah and i wanted to and just go back a little bit or go ahead if you had something more to say no no i was saying that you know even like and if somebody is building a bigger project and it looks promising and they have some something to show like you know i think both their team and our team can also help them to kind of raise more funds and you know build it more uh, you know at a, at a more larger scale Cool. So it's almost like a little seed or accelerator of sorts where you can go in, kind of create proof of concepts, and if things start to kind of roll a little bit, or if you guys are liking that, then you it opens the door a little bit more. Absolutely. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah, and I just wanted to go back just a little bit to you know you're you're in India. You know we you know we see a lot of news and different things that come out, and it's like you know Bitcoin's banned. Bitcoin's not banned. Bitcoin is banned again. Bitcoin and you know, for us, it's kind of like you just have to ignore a lot of it because, and and talk to people on the ground to figure out really what is happening over there. But what what is yeah. kind of the landscape of regulation? I mean, here in the U.S., it's very, you know, it's a very standard U.S. way of doing things where it's like if you can build a big business and build it fast and break a bunch of rules, then like you seem to be OK to a certain extent. Um, and then, you know, they kind of paved the way. So how does it work there with building, you know, these types of businesses and what's the government kind of, how are they regulating? What does it look like? Yeah. So I think, uh, like, you know, media kind of follows the sensationalism, right? So Bitcoin was never banned. Like, you know, it would be a, <laughs> it would be a news to many in the external world, but Bitcoin is never banned in India. The only thing that like our federal bank banned is that, you know, they simply said to all the banks, that you should not support the bank accounts of the crypto exchanges. The moment you don't support the bank accounts of these crypto exchanges, the fiat to crypto on ramping becomes difficult. That's the only thing they did. And then that also because India is a is like you know India and US I think have the like I think the highest liberty and you know these kind of values democratic values. So uh, I mean a bunch of people united together and then they applied uh, you know against the against the circular from the federal bank. Uh, on our Supreme Court, and then our Supreme Court said that this is unconstitutional. So either, so so what what our what our Supreme Court or the judiciary basically says is that you know, first of all, the way they did it, like you know, they could not furnish uh, like a lot of research around it that why they think that this should be banned. So they could not convince the judges. Second thing is that either like government should go ahead and actually say that oh, cryptocurrency and blockchains are like completely totally you know illegal things and things like that, and then ban it, and then then they can say that, oh, you can't put your money into this because this is illegal, right? Just like drugs or whatever. But then if you are saying that, no, blockchain is good and, you know, everything is good and you can have it as an asset and all that, but then you are doing things systematically to, you know, kind of discourage people to have their money over there, then, you know, it will, constitutionally, it will not go well with the, with the, with the overall system. Some leg of the system will uh, stand against it. And, and that's what happened. Like our ju judiciary stepped in and it is now again, open like you can have a crypto exchange and then you know can I have a bank account so but then i also see in india like government like because people need to understand the history of india so india is coming from a background of 50 60 year old systems which were like completely ridden with the corruption and you know black money and things like that and the current government you know has put a lot of focus on the you know like the modernization of technology you know the payment systems many people don't realize that there are payment systems in india are like kind of absolutely top notch like if you are there if you would have been in india it will be very hard for you to explain why you need uh, cryptocurrency because you know you you can everyone can have a digital currency these a digital identity these days like a upi id we call it and you can have like instant peer to peer transfers and all that so all the payment functionality of any cryptocurrency it's very hard to sell here because you know the current system is so good that my mom actually, you know, she's not very well studied on that, but she's able to do like, you know, phone recharge and your, you know, you know, the, your TV, you know, kind of a connection recharge or whatever the channels and pay per view and all that. So it, it has become like that simple and easy to do. Our telecom eco, you know, infrastructure is also like, you know, fairly advanced. Like we, uh, you know, because we we kind of leapfrogged into directly, you know, into I think 3G or whatever. But that's that's the benefit because if you have very legacy system, then the system that you are going to deploy will be most modern. But compared to that, to let's say US, which already has a you know robust telecom system for let's say last 20, 30 years, there they will have legacy issues, right? So 
so you know all of those things the internet speeds for example in india are like absolutely crazy like you can actually be traveling on a high speed train and you know be still live streaming some of the content because you know the, because of the geo like geo internet and all that and that oh. to like really cheap. like in in 2 dollars you can have like 60 gb download like high speed data download in 2 dollars so i think in us oh. it would be really costly right so uh, so both things <laughs> we are don't there. even have high speed trains here so i, I mean we're, yeah. we're waiting <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not not that much. Like you know, uh, when I say high speed, I mean high speed train according to Indian standards. We also <laughs> don't have those uh, like you know uh, bullet trains like you have in Japan and China. But yeah. some ones are coming. I uh, you know there's some plan. But I was saying that uh, so basically India is coming from a background previously where there was a lot of corruption and all that, and the current the government has put a lot of focus on the modernization and IT. Now and they have implemented GST and all those kind of systems wherein. uh you they can kind of uh, they can kind of uh, you know bring everyone onto the white economy right so everything comes on the books and you know it's very hard to kind of avoid taxes and things like that now and now suddenly you bring crypto into the fold suddenly boom like the whole architecture is zero right it doesn't it doesn't mean anything now so that is the that is the fear that they are coming from like you know they did they fought fought hard for last 10 years and then suddenly if crypto becomes mainstream then their whole uh, you know kind of infrastructure is absolutely trash right so that's why i feel that indian government will keep fighting crypto mainstream adoption for quite some time uh, but i hope that you know some uh, people would be able to put sense in the government that you know uh, more more like kind of be explain, be able to explain them that this is kind of an unavoidable thing you can keep kicking the can down the down the road but you have to kind of uh you know you have to face it one day or the other so that way they can you know slightly be more conducive is the indian government uh exploring digital currency on their on, like for a national currency as well like we know that the us is exploring it and it's fascinating okay. the the like the paypal news today how paypal is going to yes. support bitcoin and ethereum and i think a few others bitcoin cash litecoin and and that's like reading through that reading through the lines it's actually like wait a second what's going to happen to all of these these tools that all of the banks have built what's going to happen to visa mastercard american express discover all and on and on and on when you have a government digital currency so yeah. th- there's going to be a shift going on here and it's almost like the governments are going to be forced into crypto whether they like it or not in some manner yeah. um yeah, yeah. you know fascinating yeah yeah i think i think and and you know like uh i mean it w- it would have been us only like you could, who could have you know brought in the system like we like you know especially for the american people we like from the outside we see all the american people are like very like you know they'll be saying uh, things about the government not happy with the system and things like that but you know i am very like and many people outside do realize that you know this is the kind of democracy who can bring in uh, this level of technology like even if the president is against it treasury is against it but people are able to bring and foster that innovation just on their own just by building communities and all that and that strength to you guys comes from your constitution right it's very hard to do uh, you know do that uh, kind of things in china for example right uh, so i think that's a beautiful thing and i think us is going to lead the way and uh, you know like hopefully hopefully they lead the way for the entire world and uh, yeah this is like the paypal news is absolutely uh, you know beautiful news for everyone in this industry right yeah huge yeah, yeah i think we're I mean, everyone's just kind of waiting for this this straw that's going to break the camel's back a little bit of what is going to yeah. be kind of this landslide that moves yeah. everything all at once and you're seeing some of these chips be put on the table by some of the the technology companies and um you know all we're going to need is a couple of banks and a couple of announcements that happen and i mean you know it it's the government's job to protect people to a certain extent right it's it there are potential companies out there that have take in or done things and when people don't understand new technologies they get nervous but it, you know we we had another uh group on the podcast last week we were talking about you know third world countries and how you can make that jump in technology from kind of you know from where they were back in the the 70s now to just moving directly forward and having new technology and and better infrastructure and it just seems that the com- countries that embrace this to the fullest are going to leapfrog and move ahead so quickly 
that they're going to be, you know, there's going to be some countries that have that move well into a place that they weren't before by just bringing this on board and just embracing it versus just fighting it tooth and nail like some of the countries are now, which I understand, obviously, you want to protect people, but you should be taking with the companies and things that are happening, people should be taking a very serious look um, at all this, all these technologies and how it can really help bring innovation, bring jobs, bring growth. Um, so it'll be interesting to kind of see how that happens. Absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, I used to watch a few Twitter chats between the, like, you know, the traditional tech people and a few crypto people and the traditional tech people are like, you know, we don't understand. This is this, like talking trash about crypto and all that. And with this PayPal now, you know, looking to support, uh, you know, cryptocurrencies and all that, they would also be like, wait, dude, am I, am I missing something? Right. So that's, that, that would be that moment for many of the, you know, traditional tech guys where they realize that, oh, this, like this, I might be missing something big here. So yeah, amazing stuff overall. Yeah. Do you want to take some questions? We've got a, quite a few questions, I think, in the chat. Cause we've got about, I think, 10 minutes or so. Yeah, go for it. Um, well, we got a question from Nazar B. Hi, when new Matic roadmap? Okay, when new Matic roadmap? Yeah, so this is a very frequently asked question. And, uh, you know, so we are working on uh, quite some cool things in the background. And, uh, you know, when it will come out, uh, you will, you will, you will cool think that it, it's worth the wait. So, yeah. All right. From Desk Desktop Commando, um, will there be any NFT marketplaces like direct access to OpenSea? Um, they followed that up with rather than having to convert to ETH. Yeah, I'm not going to answer that. Uh, wait for two weeks. So you okay. did. Wait two weeks. <laughs> wait two weeks. Wait for two weeks. Wink, wink. Uh, let's see here. Sorry, I'm scrolling through a lot of just uh, random chat here. Uh, I'm not sure on this one, but Mining the Gap says, what are the timelines for foundation node wind down? Yeah, mid mid of mid of October, uh, mid of uh, November is the is the target uh, you know timeline for us right now. Okay. Uh, let's see here. There's a couple. So there's of a lot of chat here. Emble like emblem fault. What is emblem? I. Is that part of? Is that someone that's building on the network? Uh, yeah, I mean, I'm I'm not sure. Like, there must must be some team like that who would be building. Like, there are multiple teams working. So very cool. Unable to track right now. Like, who all is building what? So there, there's. I mean, naturally speaking, because we get we get a lot of this and and Twitter and everything. A lot of questions about price and things like that. And no, we're not going to talk about that. But I think one thing that would be interesting is just. Um, what what is the makeup of the team and what is that path and that journey look like like i know you guys ico'd uh, what a year and a half two years ago about two years ago i think 2019, um, 2019 we did a launch pad we did not do an ico we do ieo with binance launch I, yeah ieo so you did an ieo with binance so i I'd, I'd be curious to hear just about this journey i mean like how many like how did the team start how many people what did your fund did you have traditional funding rounds um, how did that like go through that 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 process and that path to let let people out there understand more about Matic? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we, uh, you know, with Binance Launchpad only, we we raised around uh, five million dollars, and then before that, we raised only five hundred k. So we are we are not an infrastructure team. Like we would be probably the lowest fundraising infrastructure team, uh, and then you know maybe the most adopted. Like if you see the. The, the the dollar to the number of apps building on Matic, our ratio would be absolutely you know bigger than any other uh, you know application uh, team over there. But uh, yeah, so basically we started with the, like uh, when that when we did the fundraise, we were around seven eight people. Today we are forty plus people, uh, and you know and counting we have uh, multiple uh, you know agencies uh, who like for example one uh, you know different different agencies working in different parts of the world. And, uh, you know, like absolutely a team is like, you know, now is, is ready to explode also like, you know, because of this, all this adoption that is coming. I hope you will keep seeing more and more of Matic uh, in coming days. But yeah, so the team structure is like this only we three co-founders are there. We 
you know kind of manage our teams my other two co-founders focus on the product uh and, and you know i focus on all the you know marketing technology marketing and you know business development and all that stuff uh pr branding whatever and then i have around uh, seven eight people rest 32 people 32 plus people in the team are oh. like purely technical people yeah 32 wow that's a good size team so uh one yeah. one thing i know like on our end we track we track community adoption and we track community activity. And, and so I'd love to hear from you just if there's anything around adoption that you want to add, um, you know, how it's going, what kind of trends you're seeing, what kind of spaces you're seeing adoption in. Uh, it'd be, be really great to hear more about it. So I'm seeing, like, as we already said, NFT and gaming is definitely seeing adoption. And then, you know, uh, prediction markets are definitely on an upswing. And, uh, you know, like DeFi, like, I don't need to mention that what kind of adoption DeFi is getting. And I think DeFi is a long term trend. People wrongly believe that, oh, this was like 2017, that it came and went by. DeFi is, DeFi is here to stay, right? You know, the good projects will keep coming out and will keep getting uh, value approval. Of course, we the mania of that, you know, the whole farming mania, you know, that has gone, that is past. But again, there will be good projects which will have their mining and, you know, you will keep getting good opportunities, uh, you know, here and there whenever good projects come, come across. So DeFi, NFT, gaming. These are like one of my biggest prediction markets and virtual reality also, like five top most picks for me. Mm. Great. Okay. Cool. Well, Sandeep, I mean, we hit we hit 50 minutes here and I, I appreciate you coming on and, and answering some questions. I know we've got a lot of people, it seems like a lot of people interested in what you guys are doing. Um, I did want to do, there's one more that I wanted to pop up on here. Any partnership with your alliance and said Matic is the only blockchain in India, which is famous. I didn't know you guys are, you guys are famous. Any, any oh, plan to partner with your reliance? Bro. I mean, uh, see, that's why I'm saying that, you know, many in the Western world don't realize like India, like Matic is by far the biggest blockchain uh, project in India and almost like 80 to 90% pro projects, which right now are coming out from India. They are building on, on Matic only like Matic wow. and Ethereum. Of course. And we do like, a huge number of hackathons like uh, you know last year we did 80 plus hackathons in all the technology schools and in, in india and all that and even this year uh, you know we'll be doing like 100 plus because we have few uh, teams whom, with whom we directly work with they do these college hackathons and support like having they, they kind of get this blockchain track introduced in the college hackathons so that we can bring that uh, you know blockchain uh, kind of uh, the developer uh, education in, in India. And these are this is like one initiative. There are multiple such initiatives. Blockchain India, uh, you know, fellowship program is there. Then we do build and earn program with Gitcoin and, and, you know, things like that. So on the ETH community side, like my, like that's a slightly, uh, you know, a slight, slight grudge also from my side that in spite of doing like, you know, any external team apart from the foundation, we kind of do like, like most, a lot of work for Ethereum, for Ethereum's kind of spread in the world and all that. But yeah, I mean, I think not, not many people in the Western world know that. So, but fair, like, you know, they'll get to know. Well, yeah. It sounds like an opportunity. Yeah. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Congrats. Yep. Congrats on all the, the success and, and keep building. I think, you know, people need to, to understand that it, it's a groundswell of, of adoption yeah. and building and any company, any project, not just in cryptocurrency, if you're continuously shipping product, if you're continuously growing your community, that's really what, that's where the longevity comes from. Um, it's not huge upswings in price and, and gyrations in, in activity and, and people paying a bunch of money to push, you know, Twitter campaigns out there. It's, it's slow and steady growth, which creates value. So I think you guys are on that path and Congrats on your success and, and thanks for coming on, man. We really, we really appreciate that. Hopefully you'll hang out with us backstage for a minute and thank you to everyone that came in and joined and, and asked your questions. And this podcast will be out here by the end of the week on Apple and Spotify and Google and all the other thousand different podcast networks that are out there. So Sandy, thank you, man. I appreciate it. John, as always. Thank you, thank you Joe. Thank you, John. Thank you so much Cheers. for having us. Sure. Thank you. Cheers.